والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله with the etiquettes of dua how to make supplications in the proper way and the proper way is the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the one that we know for sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua his supplications and the last 10 days of Ramadan is the time where the dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or more likely to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that any time a servant of Allah would turn sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his dua is accepted. And the acceptance of the dua is one of three forms, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant his servant what he asked for, or the second form of accepting the dua is that he will be given rewards kept for him in the hereafter or the third form of accepting the dua the supplication is for harm to be pushed away from the servant that is calling on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's definitely a winning situation for a Muslim when it comes to asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in matters of this world we don't know if it's good for us or bad for us making dua that a person would have more wealth or a house, or a car, or things of that nature. It might be a mean for our own destruction, so we don't know if it's good for us or bad. That's why when the person still make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would get one of the three. But in matters of the hereafter, it's definitely good for us. When a person asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for jannah, for forgiveness of the sins, to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the hellfire, then this is definitely something that is good for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. So when a Muslim make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should seek the blessed and the virtuous times in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that these times the dua is more likely to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the last third of the night before Fajr. Like between the Adhan and Iqamah. Like when it's raining when the person is in sujood, in state of prostration, the closest position that a person would be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is in state of sujood and prostration. Why? Because it's the most humble situation. But it's only during the salah. Some Muslims, they would make dua without being in salah. They would make sujood, prostrate and thinking that this is the best position and they would make dua. This is not the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But instead, if the person is making salah, if praying to rak'ah or an obligatory prayer, and in sujood, this is the best place to make dua. And throughout the month of Ramadan, especially the last 10 days of Ramadan, seeking Laylatul Qadr, the dua is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is where all Muslims, they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and they would make dua and supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we heard before, purifying our wealth from what is haram, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and there are certain etiquettes and manners that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do while making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of which, that the person would be in state of wudu, to be in state of completely pure purity in wudu. And the person would face the qibla, and would raise his hands as we know, in a humble way, like this, under our faces like this, in a humble way, the person would raise his hands as the Prophet ﷺ used to do, and would start the dua, the supplication, by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person starts the, the dua, the supplication, right away by saying, Oh Allah, give me such and such, he's been in haste. The Prophet ﷺ saw a man doing this. He said he's been in haste. That means he need to first praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him to start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mentioning the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person doesn't have many of these sentences of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, the beginning of Surah Al-Fatiha, 
which all of us we, we know and memorize, it's one of the great ways of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawmid Deen. This is a praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the sunnah to make salah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, the same way that we say in the second part of the tashahud when we sit in the salah. And the meaning of this is that we're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to praise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to reward the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the meaning of Allahumma salli ala Muhammad till the end. Because without the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we won't be able to know how to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We would not have known about the month of Ramadan, about the great blessings in the religion of Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hearts of the believers is more than their own selves and their own parents and so on. Why? Because he is the one through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the people after being in darkness to the complete light and clearness by the religion of Islam. So praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making salah unto the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then we make our dua, we make our supplications. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from anything that is good in this life and in the hereafter. And the best way to make dua is to use the general terms and sentences that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. The dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be very general to get all the goodness in this life and in the hereafter. Person asking for forgiveness, and this is something good to start with the dua of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness sincerely, because sins prevents the acceptance of the dua. And saying, oh Allah, give me the best of this life and in the hereafter. Like as we know in the Quran, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ To get the goodness of this life, and to goodness of this of the hereafter, and to be protected and shielded from the hellfire. See how general terms are. And if a person gets the best of this world, then he gets all the details with it. And if he gets the best of the hereafter, meaning that he would enter Jannah, and to be shielded from the hellfire. And this is the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that such a verse is revealed in the Qur'an, for us to learn how to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very simple words, that comes from these words, the happiness of this life and in the hereafter. And this is how the dua of the Prophet ﷺ used to be. When we make dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask with a heart humble, in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that there is no goodness in this life. Nothing happens in this life or in the hereafter except by the will and the power and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, can never benefit or cause harm except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Muslim turns sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see when someone is in a state of emergency, in a great distress, how would be the dua of such a person? That's how we need to have our hearts when we're making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in these nights. If a person is deprived from being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the real loser. That's why the person turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a state that he is in so much need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like a, like a person drowning, how his dua would be, how, he, how would he supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without thinking about all the other means in his life. And this is how the dua should be, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and seeking the pleasure of Allah. And at the end, we would say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad again, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And as the ulama, they say, we say it in the beginning, we say it in the end, and it's accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it's more likely to have what's in between accepted. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our dua, and to make us among those who are righteous and forgiven, and freed from the hellfire in the month of Ramadan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Muhammadin, وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الله أكبر